Off top, 1989, the rivalry between the Cowboys and the Eagles was known as the Bounty Bowl, in part because Buddy Ryan put a $200 bounty on the Cowboys kicker. Play the music. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show. What up? Look, this show just got so glamorous, so fun, so Atlanta, so everything. Also a little sad because she's a Broncos fan. But other than that, <laughs> it's been great. It's been great. The great L. Duncan is here. So we're going to talk about a lot of football. I-, I mentioned today that there should be a list of the five saddest buildings <laughs> in the NFL. So today, when you're watching the podcast, I'll be on Get Up presenting that list. But when I said it, I didn't have a list. So I've decided to enlist my friend, Charlie Kravitz, and L. Duncan to determine who has the five saddest buildings in football. Fun? Fun? Yeah. Still fun. I'm so in on that. I love to hate L- things. <laughs> yeah. you. Um, Charlie has called this the player haters ball episode. I guess that makes him buck nasty. I don't know the rest of the people's names. Um, L, before we get to that, though, um, we first met a few years back. Yeah. You told me, like, you remembered me because you're a Broncos fan, and I started with the Broncos. And so yeah. whenever I see the Broncos having success, I think of you with a smile. Whenever I see them struggling, I think of you with a little bit of sadness. So talk to us about uh, how this weekend felt for you. I honestly thought I didn't have anything left to feel. Like, we're at the part of the story, Fox, where we're saying things like, if we could just have a winning season, which is... And in total embarrassment. Listen, I knew you because you were such a huge contribution, A, to our secondary, but also the pride in my family of your role in the NFLPA. Like, that's how important Aww. football is to Broncos <laughs> fans. And that's how important our players are. Lot. Like, legit, Charlie. Like, meeting Fox, like, I was like, oh, I met Fox. My mom was like, Fox, like we literally call him Fox. And I'm working with people and they're like, Dom. And I'm like, who the f- is Dom? Yeah, He's know. Fox. <laughs> That's how much we care. And you'll always be a Bronco to me. And we have reached the point where we're not, we're not in the, in the lean years post Elway yeah. where we just, you know, we can't get off the playoff schneid or like it comes down to the final week and Jay Cutler cutlers it up. <sighs> Or, you know, are we losing the wild card round? Or, like, Tim Tebow has, like, a win, but then the next week happens against the Patriots. You know, like, we're not even there. Yeah. We and can't it, even we're, – we're we can't even just win games, Charlie. Ella, I got a question for you. If you had to um, – I guess we – MFK, but Mary Love Kill, your three quarterbacks, Jay Cutler, Tim Tebow, and Russell Wilson <laughs> – Oh uh, no! Okay. Oh man. I, I think it's pretty obvious that you marry Tim Tebow. Yeah. Is it? Well, you can't kill him. Well, I and mean, I'm I guess sure if you're not married to him, you can't do the other thing. <laughs> uh, I guess. I mean, I don't know. That's a tough one. I I thought about it in a quarterback. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. L, your brain brain out the gutter. L, jeez. <laughs> Well, I mean, you literally went very. Yeah. You could have just said, "Who would you want to keep on your team, Charlie?" You <laughs> baited me. You baited me, Charlie. I think the problem for so long is that we've been able to say, "Okay, you lose Peyton Manning. At least we have this really good defense. We can just sort this offense out." Like, obviously, what's happening with Russell Wilson is horrifying and embarrassing, mostly because we really don't have a solution. Um, the solution is what bench the guy, and then you're still eating forty five million dollars right. a year. So, but he's not so the only problem, though. But that's, that's what I'm th- saying, though. Yeah. Fox, that's why Sunday was so incredibly disheartening because 70 points, bruh. That, like, and there was like at least 20 left on the table. Mike McDaniels could have put up another 20. Oh, uh, would you bruh, like he's I, from there? Like the cry. He was their ball boy, Fox. I've I've uh I've rarely been blown out. I've been blown out a few times. Charlie's gonna bring up the Orange Bowl, his favorite thing. But I imagine that. It's worse to have somebody call off the dogs on you. I I would rather you just keep like I I'm not a child. Don't you cool it? Don't you call off the dogs on me? Don't yeah. you, like go keep scoring. Keep doing yeah. like keep that same energy. I'm not a fan of that. And I know that it's like insulting to coaches, but if I ever were to become a, uh well I'm a, a 
10-year-old flag football coach. Message to all the coaches I coach against. Run up the score. It hurt yeah. my feelings when you put in the bad quarterback. Don't put in the yeah. bad quarterback on me. Yeah, Keep I think playing. the funniest part about that was that they scored 70 points, and afterwards Mike McDaniel said they didn't run up the score. He's like, we didn't want to break the record. We didn't want to get yeah. 73. <laughs> break Thanks. it on my He's <laughs> right. It is. It's so patronizing to do that. We used to do that in high school. We would play this team, and my coach would be like, you know, these girls don't even have gloves. Like, this is, <laughs> you know. And, they, you know, they would have us do things like bat, you know, switch hit, even though we weren't a switch hitter or change. And I'm like, that is more insulting and embarrassing than just beating the brakes off of them. You understand that, right? Yeah, please beat the brakes off of me. A message to anyone who I compete with in anything. And my my bicycle races to, to work, this is something you may not know about, but I get into bicycle races on the way to work. I be busting them people. <laughs> One time I took an L, a bad L. Don't don't slow down and let me catch up. This is It's a long story, L. I'll explain it to you off the show one time. Wait, you battle other cyclists yeah. or cars? Oh, okay. No, 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 cyclists. I battle. So, like, okay. I, on the bike path, this is the rule. When you pass somebody, this is a rule I've made up. If they pass you back, <laughs> that's a challenge. It is. And, and, yeah, right? And yeah, so, it's a confrontation. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, there was two guys out there. I passed them. They passed me back, and these <laughs> had the nerve to look back. Oh, I don't know. They look back at it. I Tell me how my oh, face. That's what oh, they did to you. They they tried, but then they were the tasters. I cooked them to spandex wearing losers and and talk the whole way. And then the you just talking to yourself. Oh uh, no no no! I was talking to them loudly. Talk talk to the cycling world. What does oh, that yeah. look like? With your bummy <laughs> tires. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty tepid trash talk, but it's it's the best it's, I can do. I just imagine you being like on your left. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't call out on your left. They I don't do that because that's too like cordial. I don't call out. I don't even have a bell on my bike because that's the rules of the road. I what I my <laughs> talk was more like, all right, let's go, let's go then, let's go. There's a lot of let's goes <laughs> and pulling okay. off and and a lot and a lot of looking back at them. As the gap widened, so you just were yeah. you were the you were the cyclist Taylor Swift, just like raising both arms, like let's go, let's go. I don't know what that means. Well, let me give you a reference that I think that you can use Thank because you. Thank our good you. brother Wesley Snipes gave us a go to whenever you wanted to talk, but you don't know if the situation is appropriate. Always bet on black. <laughs> right. So like I next need... time when you ride by, just say yeah. always bet on black. I need to. My dad had a T-shirt when we were little, and I don't know where what where it is, but it was a T-shirt he he runs. So it was a T-shirt that said "Nothing behind me matters," and I never forgot that T-shirt. It was dope. I'm, I need to find me one of those. Nothing behind me matters, and I, I'm mad at you, uh, L, for rescuing Charlie. I wanted to, him to sit in that awkward silence no, when I said, "I, I, I, didn't I knew know you knew. Something. I knew you saw Taylor Swift in the booth with with Travis Kelsey's mom. We talked about it on Sunday." That's all right. It was still awkward silence. I like to create awkward oh, silence. Oh, no, 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 no. You, it was you no just your joke being crickets. Um, <laughs> but, El, I got to ask you one more thing about the Broncos. How are you feeling about Sean Payton? No, seriously, how are you feeling? Because, like, there's, we know the Russ thing. Russ is more or less cooked. Um, and he's got this contract, and they're probably going to bench him at some point so that they can cut him, and it doesn't all become fully guaranteed. But Sean Payton, talk about someone who talked a lot of <laughs> That dude talked endless amounts of <laughs> before this season. And... He got o- offensive genius pass torched by McDaniel. Is that what? Yeah. Are, what are the vibes with with Peyton? It's he had so much to say about Nathaniel Hackett. I was actually okay with that at the time. I don't care about these unwritten rules of yeah. we just don't say these things, we don't do these things. Certainly, that all went out the window when it comes to Dion. Wow, those unwritten rules really go out the window when they want to talk about him and his program. Um, so I didn't have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. In the same way that I have a problem with Russ coming up with a catchphrase before he took the field. Like, let this play out a little bit before you start talking about the last regime and what they did and did not do. Because I also remember a regime that involved Vance Joseph being there and there was a reason he got fired. Okay, so now we're over here sort of making excuses for 70 points. Well, 21 about was this and we left 21 on the table. He's over here doing math. Um, he came in like a wrecking ball. He promised he was going to sort oh, this gosh. thing out. He talked about other people. 
And now he has to sit in this, the worst loss that we've seen since 1966. I don't, like, I don't feel any sense of optimism. And guys, it has been really difficult to navigate sort of ignoring Denver. It's actually been really easy because for so long they were like the 25th worst team in the league. And now all we're doing is talking about them for being so historically bad. And there is just no end in sight. I got a confession to make. You mentioned Wrecking Ball, and I thought that you were about to go on a Taylor Swift song reference thing, which I... That's Miley Cyrus. Exactly. That's the confession that I had to make is I I mixed them up for a hot second. They're nothing alike. Well, they're a little bit alike, but nothing alike. I mean, no, a little bit of like. Those are not. Mm, no, no, uh, no, kind of no. like, kind of like how um, uh, how Dennis Rodman and the guy next to Taylor Swift are like. We're not both, the same. <laughs> both <laughs> the same complexion. Um, the end. Should we? Should we get? Should we get to our list? I wanted to ask Elle if uh, she ever had a moment, a professional moment, as embarrassing as uh, what the Broncos had this weekend and what yeah. uh, Sean Payton. The dose had this of weekend. humility. Um, yeah. Well. All the time, Fox, because uh, people will come up to me and go, I'm a huge fan of yours, Ellie. So <laughs> almost daily I'm reminded and humbled well, because no one knows my well, name. Cool. Well, they, but, I mean, um, they, they know enough of it because I get this all the time. ESPN, hey, hey, <laughs> ESPN, yeah, I see you, brother. Like, that's that. I get that where it's like, uh, yeah, that's my name, ESPN. Yeah, the good brother Jalen Rose, when I first started working at ESPN, would just call me ATL. I'm like, my, my name is L. I, he just knew I was from Atlanta. He was like, yeah. ATL, what up? But um, no, he he was he was spelling L-E-L-L-E. Is that what A-T-L, it was? ATL, yeah. You can't spell L without ATL. Wait, other you way can't around. can't spell ATL. <laughs> it's fine. Charlie right. will just edit that out of the podcast. No, he so, won't. So my most humbling professional moment, mm. I'm doing radio in Atlanta. And I'm just at the point where I'm starting to host parties. I'm getting a little cheddar to host these parties. And now mm. my name is appearing on the flyer, Ooh. which, as you know, Fox, is a huge big deal. Yeah. So this promoter that I know calls me and he's like, L, his name is 6'9". I don't know his real name. That's obviously, but he was six foot nine. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, he's like 6'9". Like what? And he's like, I want you to host a party with Nicki Minaj. Now, Ooh. this is a huge deal for me. I get to have my name on the flyer with Nicki Minaj. The billing is there. The money is there. The promotion is there. This is like super base Nicki Minaj, right? So she's really just starting to hit her like, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, like her zenith. Hosting the party. I've got a table. My table's next to Nicki Minaj's table. I'm feeling myself. My name is on the flyer. Let's go. Ooh. I got the mic. I'm wielding the crowd. I get mm. word. Nikki's showing up. She's coming. Okay. She's about to be here. I'm plotting out how I'll introduce all right. myself. All right. All of a sudden, tap on the shoulder, and it is Nicki Minaj's security. And he said, you have to get the <laughs> out. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, what? And he was like, Nikki's coming, and I need to clear this area, and you need to leave. And but I said, sir... I'm hosting the party. Like I have the microphone. This is my table. Like I'm not a fan. I'm hosting. I'm on the same level with Nikki in my mind. Uh huh. Ma'am, you need to go. You need to get the <laughs> out. I don't care. You need to leave. <clears throat> so imagine, Fox. I'm sorry. How humbling it was. Nikki Minaj comes in, a party I'm hosting with her, and I'm announcing her in the crowd with the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Looking up at her at my table. Oh, gosh. Nicki Minaj is in the building. Finally, (laughs) after like 25 minutes, they allowed me back in the area. So that was incredibly humbling. Yes, I get to host a party with Nicki Minaj. She kicked me off so fast. That is not 70 to 20, though. So it's not nearly (laughs) as humbling as what Sean Payton uh, just went through. I All still right. don't think Charlie and Fox that they're the saddest fans. So let's get into it. I don't. I don't okay. actually think you they're don't... the saddest fans. I don't. Oh, All great. Right, We're going to have disagreeing on our list. This is perfect. <laughs> We're going to get a composite <laughs> ranking for Dominique. Yeah, I okay. appreciate it. Yeah, we can we can hop right into it. I also, at some point, I saw the video that you and your co-host did where you were rapping, Gary, and... Charlie said that he was going to bring us some bars, but I assume that he hasn't. So we'll I get to our ranking. I absolutely did not. 
You said you had you said you had a flow for us. You said you goes going to go back to mixtape Wayne. This on is us. such a you, lie. You put your hat on backwards and everything. This is such a lie. You really Dominique, did. You I put can, your hat on I backwards and say, everything. We can, we'll put the screenshots up where you're like, do you have a do you have do you have bars prepared? I was like, no. And you're like, all right, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that was passive aggressive. Is what that was. Fine, don't <laughs> don't <laughs> then don't then. All right, buddy, Charlie, get us started. All right, my number five most pathetic and sad franchise. The LA Chargers. Oh, that's sad. I mean, uh, I don't know that I even had them in the in the list. You know, they've got to think of them. Do you know how sad it is to have Justin Herbert, this young this young star quarterback, and have him saddled where you know they're going to choke away every single game, and if things go as well as possible, they're going to get to the first round of the playoffs and blow a four touchdown lead because their coach is an absolute buffoon. Yeah, I guess that's pretty. By the sassy. way, Freudian slip. Charlie just was starting to say hot. He went to say young, <laughs> hot, and then he stopped himself. So apparently, also Ugh. thinks Justin Herbert is handsome. Okay, alas, he's like he's not in us. my top five of handsome quarterbacks, but he's you know he's got good hair. I mean, we're clearly a Jalen Hurts is the hottest quarterback podcast. Correct. It's been, a, it's yes. been established long ago. Done. There nothing coming off of that. Um, nope. I guess Jimmy Garoppolo way down the list somewhere. All right. Two. Um. Uh, no. The list. Yes. He's way down the list. It's a big gap. Is... It's Jalen Hurts, everybody else. Oh, my God. You've had, I mean, Dominic's had like a litany of bad takes, including that he was just weeping into his cereal about Russell Wilson all weekend. But putting <sighs> Jimmy Garoppolo way down the list of quarterbacks? Come on. Yeah. I mean, no, he's not way down the list. It's just a big gap between him and Jalen. But anyway, um, the who's your five? So, I mean, the 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 context of this was the saddest building. Yeah. They just coming off a win. So, I, I mean, I guess overall it's a sad building. The saddest but yeah. impossible. Sad, the fact that <laughs> you, the way you get a very win, sad win. Is, the way you get a win is Kirk Cousins <laughs> being like, take it, take it, buddy. I'll out choke you. And I, I thought about putting the, the Vikings, the 0 3 Vikings at number five, but I was like, yeah. you know what? They win like 12 games every single year. They know that Kirk Cousins is going to be out after this year. They're not that sad. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. Elle, what do you think? Who you got for five? I, I'm with Charlie. I didn't plan on a list for just people that lost us last weekend. This is, in right. my mind, people who are sad. Yeah. I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Number five, I'm going the Jacksonville Jaguars. Ooh. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because you do have a young, not high, quarterback. <laughs> talented. Okay. Yeah. Very talented. Tall. Sure. That's important, I guess. Tall. You have the hopefulness, you've got the optimism of a future, but you also have constantly hanging over your head the idea that even if you are good, they're taking the to London. Yeah. It's like, right? It's like, so so it's like you've got like one foot in. You're like, well, should I come and support yeah. Trevor Lawrence? It's cool to watch. Like, they're a great, fun, young team. But then you also know that like good chances are like, you'll be saying goodbye, mate. That's Australia. <laughs> Did you get what I'm saying? No, I get it. That's I, sad. I, I'm tempted. Like, I was trying to concoct a least offensive way possible analogy of what it's relationship-wise is. Like, hey, you guys was together in high school when you were the captain of the football team. Now she's going off to college. Oh, she's going to law school, and you still at home getting fat, and you guys still together, but barely. You know, soon as she get popping, she is done with your that's how you're right. Jacksonville feels like a weight station. Right. Exactly. Like you're yeah. just you, you, it's coming it's and you know it, you know, so it's like, do you just live with the fact that she's settling for you right now? And are you OK with that? Or do you cut ties now so you don't get heartbroken? I don't know. But I, like I have him there. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's fun. All right, Charlie, what you got? He played well this weekend, too. I thought he played poorly because they lost. I watched the game and um, Trevor was pretty good. They had dropped balls, a lot of other mistakes, but he's still. A uh, hot young quarterback. He's right uh, he's had some some tough drops this season. He had Zay Jones dropping three touchdowns in week two. It's not not ideal. Um, I think he's thrown one touchdown in his last hundred attempts. It's been they say sunshine, but it's been a drought. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm using that too. If I if I make them my number five, I, I'm using all this stuff. Thanks guys yeah. for doing my job for me. Uh huh. You got uh, it. All right. Get up. Sunshine, but is it, what rain? What was I messed it up already? Drought. <laughs> oh, drought. So the drought. Speaking of the drought, Charlie mixtape Wayne. I did. I did love the drought three. Sort of religious experience. Um, number four on my list, the Carolina Panthers. 
Uh, and there's a lot of reasons for them to be sad. Obviously, they're really bad. They're bereft of talent everywhere. Um, some of the cha- talent that they've shipped around the league is helping like the 49ers offense be one of the best offenses imaginable. But also, they have to look at Houston and be like, we could have drafted that guy, and instead we drafted a quarterback who's as big as Cairo Santos, who we basically sat down and said, take a week off so we don't hurt your confidence anymore, buddy. Um, and that's yeah. Bryce Young. And so I want to read you the Rookie of the Year odds because it's Stroud at plus 250, Bijan at plus 275, Anthony Richardson at plus 600, Puka Nakua at plus 700, Devon wow. A-Chain at plus 1,000, Tank Dell at plus 1,600, and Bryce Young at plus 4,000. That's the guy they took over all of the other top flight quarterbacks. The other two we already know can play. So they're sad. Yeah, and they had a team that we thought had a good offensive line last year. They also had a coach in Steve Wilkes who kind of made something good out of a bad situation uh, in the interim and they sent him away, and for Frank Reich, the offensive uh, mastermind, and they are not masterminding anything. And, yeah, having to look across at C.J. Stroud is the guy you were talking about and know that you could have had him is pretty tough. That's a sad place, sad, sad place to be. But there's still hope. What do you think, Al? Who you got number four? Yeah, I don't I don't have the Panthers in my top five just because, again, like they've got some hopefulness, and honestly mm-hmm. – the Panthers have always just sort of stumbled into any success. Like, no one thought Jake DeLone was going to be a thing, and that was fun for them for a while. And then it was like, oh, Cam Newton, like, that's cool. I'll ride that for a little while. I don't think they care enough to be sad is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to go macro again with number four. Okay. The Browns. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you why. I, I They are honorable the mentions. History. This is a great pick. Right? We all know their history. They have all the buzz, the fumble, the drive, the does. Now, the closest that they've ever been to a Super Bowl means that if they do get one, they will still always have Deshaun Watson attached to it. Yeah, Like, that is sad. And I want it for Browns fans. You know, like, they're, it's sad. It's like sad. They have incredible. I want it for them. But now, but nobody, but like now, if you do get it right now in this era, there's an, they have an incredible defense and, and a chance, I think, to make a run. But you're right. The whole storyline for their playoff run is going to be tied to them uh, offering a fully guaranteed contract to a man who is currently uh, being accused uh, by multiple women of sexual misconduct and assault. That is not Correct. a fun thing to be. I imagine it, it would seem that a lot of Browns fans don't care, but... Uh, one way to other, it but doesn't it's matter. Still, Even if they say yeah. that, Fox, the stench is always there. It will yeah. always be. You mention it, and yeah, that this and it just will be. And, and that's not fair for Browns fans, but at the same time, like that's just where they are, which is why I think they're so sad. And he's unrepentant, and he's bad at football. And in his one good game where he played slightly better at football, he turned around and threw the ball twenty yards backwards, and somehow got bailed out by the Browns recovering. <laughs> Correct. <it. laughs> that far, very, very true. All right, Charlie, number three. All right. Number three, and I, honestly, you might make a fan of this team really happy by, that, by having them number three on the list instead of higher. The New York Jets, they're my number three team. They are a sad, pathetic building. They keep trotting Zach Wilson out there. You've got Sala, who continues to make excuses and lie to the locker room and say Zach's our guy. Um, and as, as Elle knows, as it's the hope that'll kill you. And yeah. They had hope coming into the season, and now they're getting lambasted by everyone. Even even Joe Namath called them yeah. disgusting. That's a disgusting man calling them disgusting. <laughs> yeah, give me a kiss, Susie. Um, yeah, uh, that team. Yeah, they they're contestants, or yeah, they were contenders for the number one spot in my mind because of all the hope the whole off season. So yeah, this I can't argue with this. Who you got at three? Or L? Did you have a response to this one? I did. I actually had the Jets as my number one overall saddest franchise for the aforementioned reasons because the other two teams I will name did not enter this season with any modicum of real hopefulness for a Super Bowl. Right. I mean, like, Fox, I'm sorry. And I've said this. I said it on my podcast. I was not happy that the man got hurt. But Instagram and the algorithm for days constantly showing me the video of you guys kicking it with your wings and your oh, chips yeah. and salsa just minutes before kick <laughs> minutes before kickoff it just kept doing like 
y'all, you like you really thought y'all were they really thought they were going to the Super Bowl. I mean, you really did. It was a rough, and it was it a rough to, time. For it to to now have Zach Wilson, who has somehow regressed. He already was bad. It it almost seemed impossible that he could be worse, but he is somehow. They're, They've got to be the saddest franchise and the saddest fans in all of NFL. Dead, dead last in completion rate all three years of his career, Zach Wilson. It's tough. And it, it he kind of seems like he doesn't want to be out there, which like oh, it's I get. A, it's, it, I really shouldn't feel bad for him. You Are should. you? You should. No, it's he's not. Dominique. He's, he's not. So we had a conversation over the weekend where I was saying that I feel bad for people, for players and quarterbacks who things don't go well for, like Russell Wilson, for example. And then Charlie and his ilk said that you can't feel bad for anybody like no, that. No, 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 you no. Not, this is gaslighting. Feel, this is gaslighting. This is not gaslighting. This is what happened. This it's is like gaslighting. You, you can't feel bad for them because they make a lot of money or something like that. No, I, right. I never brought up money. Number I just said two. they gave up 70 points. That's not Russell Wilson's fault. Why am I feeling bad for him? <laughs> number okay. two, L. L, give me your number two, L. Then we'll go back to Charlie because you already gave us your number one. Yeah, well, my so my number three was the Broncos. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, I'm sorry, not number two, number three. Alas, even though it's bad, we do have, within the last decade, a championship. We oh. have had, in our existence, a couple of Hall of Fame quarterbacks under center, which is my, my number two is the Bears, because mm. 13 my number two straight well. losses, right? Charlie, they thought like they have been trying to solve the riddle at quarterback for a long freaking time. I mean, I will forever be angry at Chicago for Rex Grossman. And it has just not happened for them. They thought they had it with Justin Fields. And last week alone is just a microcosm of the Bears as a whole. You know, yeah, I don't, their D I don't coordinator know. leaves, guys are hurt. Justin Fields is finally saying what we all know. And then he has to walk it back. I forget that I'm dealing with two media professionals because you guys know how to make a list because the proper way to make a list is the obvious number one. You don't put it number one because how could you argue that any building is sadder than the Chicago Bears building right now? Well, I we'll I mean, get to that. We'll get to I how we'll argue it. The only argument for that is the Bears have two draft picks that look like they're going to be high. And hopefully that if they do get the high uh, draft pick and could get Kayla Williams, hopefully he says, no, thank you. And stays in school oh, because th- all, all, all that, all that the bears have done is fail their quarterbacks and ruin things. And they got a coach who is being accused of, uh, or the rumors of him doing ridiculous things. There's n- nothing to be excited about there. They sent away the, an all pro middle linebacker to then spend that money on two other middle linebackers who aren't that good. They passed up on Jalen Carter, despite the fact that they run a system that is centered around having a player like Jalen Carter. Like, I, it's hard for me to understand how any other building has less hope and is sadder than them going forward. You know why, Fox? Because Matt Ryan didn't (laughs) deny coming back and playing for the Bears, and he did that for the Jets. And when Matt Ryan decides to stay in the booth and call Bears Broncos over (laughs) coming back and finishing his career, you're the most pathetic team in the NFL. All right, Charlie, who do you got? I I would like to point out, by the way, the Bears – uh, lost by 50. Or, sorry, the Dolph- the, the Bears are three point underdogs to the Broncos, who lost by 50 last yeah. week, um, yeah. which is just wild. Uh, Justin Fields, 5 and 23 as a starter. You know, 66.7 passer rating over that time is 31st in the NFL. Um, but I put them at two because of the picks, because they have the Panthers pick and their own. And it's the same thing that we thought the Cardinals. By the way, I love that we all left the Cardinals off the list. Those immoral Cardinals who we thought were tanking are actually going in the right direction. Happy building. Probably happy because yeah. Kyler's not playing. Um, but the Bears were two for me because I had to put the Broncos number one. And the reason I did that was not to troll L. Duncan, but it's because we're talking about the future. I'm sorry, L. You don't have one. You're, yeah, st- you're, st- you're stuck yeah, it's with helpless. five more years of Russell Wilson's contract. And it's like the Broncos right now are the, ironically, because it's a Shanahan running San Francisco, they're the anti-49ers. They're paying all of their money to someone who can't play at the quarterback position. 
and they can't build a team around him because of it. Because the defense took 10 steps back. They traded, obviously traded Barrett Lee Chubb last season, and things are falling apart. And they might not even be have an offensive genius coach anymore. We see this with coaches with the game passed them by. It's obviously too soon to tell with Peyton, but they might regret that investment too. And so overall, like it just might just be a decade of sadness. You might be right. Yeah, my dad, I had to remind my dad uh, yesterday, he's actually born and raised in Denver, hence, you know, part of my Broncos love. And he said, you know, it's it's, it's impossible to watch. So it, at the very least, you know, keep losing. We get a high draft pick. And I said, Dad, they don't even have their first round pick next year. And he was like, yes, Mom, and then he was back to remembering that there is no hope. And um, yeah, but again, Charlie, I will argue that the only reason that the fan base is not the saddest is because we still have some recent history of success. Yeah. Like we were for many, many years, America's team. We were when Peyton was there. We were America's team. Like it was the team. We had that within the last decade. And those other teams do not. Yeah. And it, there's no hope in sight for Chicago just because of their history with yeah. quarterbacks. And for the Jets, literally all of their hopes hinge on a 40-year-old Achilles being able to heal in time to come back and somehow salvage this contract. I just don't, yeah, I don't think tough. it's good. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out how my final list. I was like, you want to find out who won? Yeah. Do we have to tune in tomorrow yeah. to get up and see? I, mean, I don't think I get no extra credit for y'all tuning in. So that's so true. Rather than tune in, rate and review this podcast, Ooh. and also go watch L's podcast. Rate and review that. Also, send some comments. Do all the things that help us get uh, credit, so I, that we. I gotta ask you guys jobs. one thing before you totally wrap it up. Are you more excited to watch Dolphins Bills or? Uh, Bengal or, or or um Broncos Bears this weekend because like oh we watch football together I cannot wait to see Dominique weeping on the couch with a box of tissues being like I feel so bad for both of these teams <laughs> yeah uh it's L I'm sorry I, I hate to expose you to these people that I work with who have no feelings or no emotions and think that anyone who's had any success in life can never be sad about anything so L if anything ever goes wrong for you, they're not going to care about you. They're like, oh, yeah. no, but Elle got her own show. So, oh, whatever. She'll be Laugh fine. She'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Monsters. She'll be fine. What do we always say? They can dry their tears with those stacks of money. <laughs> like that Because that's what these people do. They sleep on stacks of money. I do, <laughs> though, before you wrap, have to ask you something, Fox, if it's unique uh -oh. to you. Oh, what's that? Is that a, oh, yeah, I got one of them little oh, pit, pit combs. Yeah, I know. I got it. Yeah. Same thing. I use it. What to do help. you find to be more egregious? Because I am debating which of these grievances should go in taking the L. The idea that the Bills tried to troll the commanders of DC by tweeting at them a crushed can of Old Bay, yes. which of course is incorrect because yeah. that's Baltimore. Or is it more egregious that the Colts trolled Baltimore? By showing an Alaskan crab instead of whatever uh, the one is that yeah. Baltimoreans. Yeah, what's a Baltimoreans? I, I'm from Baltimore. It's a blue crab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's more egregious the commanders one because it is. I live in D.C. now and I grew up in Baltimore. And you know when you're really close like that, yeah. there is nothing more insulting than to be mixed up with that very close so like the baltimore this is like a hilarious just, rivalry please educate the people on this it really yeah. is yeah baltimore got confused with alaskan crab eh, baltimoreans don't really care about that if you had said like your music is trash and then played go-go music mm -hmm. baltimoreans would be annoyed and irritated and frustrated charlie grew up in in dc also so he understands the um ridiculous rivalry but I think it's much worse to say to the nation's capital, Chocolate City, filled with its own culture and everything that it has to be like, you know what? Y'all ain't nothing but some Old Bay sauce when it has nothing to do with them. Also, like, you Buffalo, home of the Buffalo Wing. DC, home of Mumbo Sauce, Mumbo Wings. There was your yeah. troll job. Yeah. yeah. 
nobody knows about mumbo sauce. I guess Except not the demographics of Buffalo well, as well. <laughs> listen, as I said, whoever is Buffalo social media that yeah. got that wrong probably lack the seasoning to get it right, if you know what I mean. <laughs> definitely, definitely did. That is a fantastic way to end. I didn't even know that they did that. That's embarrassing. Um, well, <laughs> speaking of embarrassing social media, my social media team who runs my social media just picks on me all the time. That's what they do because they're button, Oh, you have a team? A no, social media team? You know what? It's... Stars. They're just like us. <laughs> I don't. I just call them a team. It's the same people that produce the show. You got to make it sound bigger. Fake it till you make it, L. Fake it till you make it. Anyway, thank you so much, L. Duncan, for joining us. We have to do this again sometime. Um, you have to have Charlie on your podcast when his when his bars are ready to spit. Um, yeah, please. And thank you, Charlie, for hosting or helping or whatever, being a general jerk. Um, thanks, Brian, Kevin, Ethan, Megan, Serafina, Rob, and Podville. You guys are the best. Bye. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show.